we're just going to set up here, ladies and gentlemen, to now put the dry ice into the boiling water to visualize the tornado. Dry ice here. Now, we're just using the dry ice as a visual agent so we can, as I said, see the process. Now we're back again, turn on the first two set of fans. As you can see, it's very effective. Now we have the fans on. As our way to measure how fast the train is going, this is known as a digital anemometer. You can simply measure as much speed inside the train itself by placing it into the center of the vortex. We get very readings of about uh, five miles an hour. Now it just whoops. Sometimes when you're inside the inflow path, you can't affect the tornado from deep warming. In that case, um, you have to stay out of the tangential path of all this to have to be I am getting a reading of about 15 kilometers per hour now. And that's how we measure wind speed with the digital hand or not for our wind speed measurements. Both fans are running on the roll speed setting at 5.8 to 6.4 and I'll just jump to 9.6 kilometers per hour. To measure temperature, we have here a temperature probe as well as a barometer to measure air pressure in the tornado. Just simply take the temperature sensor to get a reading fans, as well as the tornado itself. And we get a constant reading of about, as it says here, 18 degrees Celsius, 17 degrees Celsius, jumps between 16 and 18 degrees Celsius. Pressure. We just had the sensor close to the trail to get very readings. And that is our measurement procedures. To make sure at what degree angle that the info fans are set. Take, simply take a large protractor, such as this one. Just make sure to measure the corner at what degree angle the info fans are going. We vary the direction of the air going into the tornado at 30, 60, and 90 degrees for our experiments. With those variations of degree angle, we can affect the size of the tornado as well as the speed of the tornado itself. The updraft speed is set at constant control speed as our control as we change the inflow speeds in order to plug into the swirl ratio. In order to find the S value to explain at what value multiple vortices take place. Remember the swirl ratio act as a forecasting parameter and predicting 
how the structure of the forms of AO will be, as well as its intensity to form multiple vortices. The change in flow in fans simply may use cutouts for doors, reach in, and change the fan speeds. To make it go higher, you can see how the tornado is affected by reforming and dissipating. Sometimes it's not as visible, but we can lower the fan speed in to see how it can be filled. I see a loose drum with the updraft speed. The updraft fan, which you can see above, is pulling up the convergence of air to form the tornado. Uh, and as I said, that is at control speed in order for us to experiment in forming multiple vortices. This tornado forms to a height of seven and a half feet, but in the science world, we use the metric system, and that would be 2.3 meters above the ground. That's how high the updraft band is suspended. And we simply suspend the updraft band with bungee cord, but two wooden branches. And as we run low on the dry ice, it's our visual exit. We have to reflect on our way of seeing the tornado. But it's always a good way to remember, ladies and gentlemen, not all tornadoes are visible to the human eye. When the air is too dry, the atmosphere in which the tornado is forming, it still can be a tornado. It's not visible to our human eye. Most tornadoes form in a high uh, moisture environment in which the moisture allows us to protect moisture for us to see the tornado itself. And representing this condensation of moisture is the dry ice in the boiling water. But as you can see now, we're, we're going to be low. We do have about 10 minutes to do the experiment for a amount of time that we do have to try nice uh, producing the fog. But at the end of the time, we repeat our trials. I'm happy to have to present this to you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm glad it made uh, a very good impression on those who will be interested in tornadoes and as a career to go into meteorology, to study severe storms, specifically something known as massive scale analysis, which would be a specific area of research to study how tornadoes form, uh, as well as learning how multiple vortices is a specific phenomenon which this experiment is set out to investigate using the small ratio of the happens. Uh, this is a a large-scale tornado machine that I have constructed uh, myself through uh, 12 boxes cut out with 20-inch diameter holes uh, to have the full fans to be set in. Um, tornado machines such as this one that I'm standing in um, are a great way to study tornadoes in the laboratory. Uh, it is a great challenge to also study the tornadoes out in the real field where measurements that we get out of the field studies or from storm chasing, take those measurements back into the laboratory, plug them into the equations, and apply them to the, uh, our man-made tornado machines, such as this one, in order to create better forecasting early warning light systems, which ultimately saves more lives in the event of a tornado going through uh, the area. Again, I thank you for those who are watching. I hope that this is a good impression for those who enjoy tornadoes.